We studied some this morning in the book of Hebrews. If you want to turn to chapter 12, that's where we'll be reading from. back in the house of the Lord this morning, and we're thankful that uh, the Lord has let us have the health and strength to stand here and to read songs and to read some of His Word. We're, we're just uh, thankful that, uh, that we're able. And uh, we ask that each one of you pray for us and pray for the church, pray for the services today, and that the Lord might send the Holy Ghost in, in a great way, and that we might I uh, feel His presence. Amen. And we might, uh, we might just enjoy spiritually enjoy, enjoy the day. We won't uh, fleshly. We won't enjoy the day fleshly. Uh, and I can say that. Now I know what I'm talking about. We won't. We won't enjoy it because uh, the flesh can enjoy it. But anyway, uh, we have our spirit with us, and uh, the Holy Ghost will come in, and He will minister to us. Amen. And so God's word is true. What I read, uh, if I read it correctly and I don't skip and mess around, uh, it's God's word. Amen. So we, we are, we're thankful this morning we have this opportunity. Uh, in verse 12, uh, chapter 12, verse 1, well, in, in this, uh, we, he's, well, we'll go ahead anyway. In verse 1 of, of chapter 12, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now the writer of the book of Hebrews is saying this morning that we are a witness and that we are compassed about with a cloud of witnesses. And we need to, as we walk through this earth, as we uh, do our living, we need to remember that we are a witness for God. Amen. And we, uh, in our actions, in our moves, in our speech, and all, we put out signals that we are a witness. Sometimes we put out signals that we're down and out. Sometimes we put out signals that we're not in the will of the Lord like we should be. But we put out witnesses and our, our signals. And here uh, he is saying here that we're we're compassed with this great uh, great cloud of witnesses. And so we need to remember this. But before we before we read any more in this here, he's saying here that we should run with patience the race that's set before us. In fact, in uh, in the um, the eleventh chapter, there, as he was leading up to this, here is some of the conditions that people were as uh, back in the old days in David's time and and, 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 uh, and back then. But notice here says in uh, uh, well we'll we'll we'll, we'll see from verse thirty five women receiving their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance. Uh, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection and others had trials of cruel mocking and scorning yea moreover of bonds and of imprisonment they were stoned they were sawed asunder were tempted were slain with the sword they they wandered about in sheep skins and goat skins being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. Amen. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Now, I read that to kind of get you to see what the writer here is trying to warn us against because uh, all of these things that as they were as they were uh, trying to serve the Lord and living in dens and caves and 
had old skins on them and, and, and this thing, they were still serving the Lord. Mm -hmm. And they were, they were still, they were still uh, saying to those that were after them and all, we are serving the Lord, we love the Lord, and we intend to serve the Lord. And we this morning, uh, as uh, that live in much, a much better condition, we still fail miserably. Mm -hmm. And so this should bring us to, uh, to the point of seeing how much we, we do fail the Lord. Because he says, seeing we are also, in verse 1 again, are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight. And these weights are the love of the world. Amen. These are the things that we 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 uh, sometimes let the flesh put in front of our spiritual needs, in, in front of serving the Lord. We have these weights about us. And so he says, don't let these weights interfere with you serving the Lord. Because he says, and, and the sin which does so easily beset us. And these sins are of the flesh. And I want to read something to you in Colossians, if I can find it real easy. Over in Colossians 3 and verse 8. <clears throat> Notice what the, the Bible says here in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 8. But now you also put off all of these. And these are the, these are the sins that does so easily beset us. Notice, but now ye also put off all of these anger, wrath, malice, blaspheming, filthy communication out of your mouth, and lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Now, these are, I, and I believe the writer here in, in the book of Hebrews is talking about some of the sins that does so easily beset us. Right. And it is very easy for this tongue of ours to put out a little falsy in order to uh, maybe get in good with somebody or agree with somebody and really you don't believe it, but anyway, to keep them hurting their feelings or something, you go along with it. Mm -hmm. These are these are some of the things that so easily beset us. Uh, you know, even uh, uh, we, we, we know that our dress uh, even a lot of times interferes with with our serving the Lord and right. and, and we uh, sometimes we just dress accordingly and uh, a lot of people uh, you don't see too many people going to the beach in a, a full dress or a full suit of clothes or nothing no they go down there because the rest of the people are doing the same thing and right. they expect it and so this is just some of the examples some of the things that does so easily beset us and so he said here uh, and uh, uh, and it, the, this beset, I looked this beset up, and it, it means it surrounds you, it it it, it engulfs you, it it takes uh, it takes charge of you, and this is what he's talking about here when he says that does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So well, if we get a rid of this weight, the love of the world. And we take more control of this flesh and keep it under condemnation, keep it under control, then we can run the race a whole lot better, a whole lot freer. Because just common knowledge will teach you if you try to run up a hill with 25 pounds on your back, it's going to slow you down. Mm -hmm. Or if you're if you're waiting for somebody that's running with 100 pounds on her before you get there, that's going to interfere with you too. So these are some of the, the examples that we can use from running the race. And then in verse 2 he says here, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And so when we, uh, when we stop looking, when we stop recognizing who our Savior is, we stop and I'm not, I'm not saying that we completely fall out, but a lot of the times we forget when we're running this race to understand that Jesus is in charge, that the Holy Spirit is within us is in charge, and that we are to be looking 
and un trying to understand what he would have us do, how he would like for us to run the race, how that he would like for us to do the things that he has placed in our hearts. So he's saying, look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And so if he's the author, he created it. And if he's the finisher, he'll be there and he'll be there with him to the end. And so we're running this race and there's some things on looking uh, in this race is that we, uh, we, we got to see what we are running for, where we are running to, and listen, <clears throat> there is some <coughs> rest places along the side. Amen. And, uh, sometimes these places will get you in trouble. Uh, if you, if you, if you let this weight beset you and you have to take a break, then when you sit down, you're, 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 you're wasting Jesus's time. And so we need to, we need to really look, look and see what the end result is. And that is crossing, crossing the finish line. That's, that is the, that is the end result of our race. And to stand before the Lord God of heaven and say, here, say it well done. Amen. You know, that's, that, that, that is our race. So he's saying here again, <clears throat> Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who, now listen to this, but this is, this is good. This is good, and, and I, I'll tell you what, I, I enjoyed studying this, this lesson uh, so much. I've got such a blessing out of it. I wish that I could tell you, I wish I could, I wish I could repeat to you how that the Holy Spirit shows it to me. But in my old age, my mind fades me. I forget. But I know this. <laughs> One time this week, I had a, an inner encounter, an inner encounter with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he spoke to my heart. And he told me about this. But notice, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Notice what it says, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now notice in this, uh, as, he, as he was going to the cross, he was, he was running this race. Now notice, and he says he is the author and the finisher, but he said, who for the joy of it? He, he, cre he, he enjoyed it because he knew that he was in the Father's will. He knew that there was billions of souls out there that had to be something done for, that he had to do that, and it was a joy to me. Amen. And listen, this race that we're running, we need to enjoy it. We need to be in the will of God. And listen, if we're in the will of God, that weight will, will, will leave us that sin we will get rid of and we can enjoy this run. And Man. Jesus says here that he, uh, the writer says here that Jesus, here who for the joy that was set before him, God set this, this, this thing before him. And he, he, I know that in the, in the halls of eternity, they discuss this. And he's, he, they're saying, well, there has to be a sacrifice. There's got to be a sacrifice. And Jesus, I know Jesus voluntarily said, I'll go. And he said, for the joy of it that was set before him, he endured the cross. And he said here, as he was there on the cross, and he was hanging there and dying, and you know, he said, forgive them, Father, for they don't know what to do. And he also, he cried out and he said, it's finished. But listen, he says, despising the shame. Now, why would he, why would we, the writer, use this word despising? And I thought, it can't be hating. It, 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 God's, God is love, and Jesus is love. But listen, there was a, there was a, a, a thing that was happening to Jesus that he did not want. He did not love. And that was all of the sins of the world right. put up on him. These things were there, and he was he was he was he was hurting because of all of this sin. And the thing of it was that God 
cannot look upon sin. God does, he, it's a stink in his nostrils. Right. He, just, he despises sin. He don't love, he don't love sin. So he, he despises it. He hates it. And, and you know, he, he talked about the two that he, one he loved, the other one he hated. Listen, so there is a, a type of hate that God can hate and he hates sin. Amen. He hates it. And Jesus was there and he says he's despising the shame of it. The shame that, that the father could not look upon him. And the shame of it that he was having to bear all of this. But yet it was a joy to him. Now you tell me, you tell me how can, how can a, 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 a person, any, there's no person, the human being, that could enjoy the cross and despise the shame of it and be be human but jesus christ did that for Amen. us and people this morning when we when we think about what jesus did for us we ought to be ashamed we ought to be ashamed of our our actions of our thoughts of our laziness of our things that's going on in our life because listen he did it all for us Amen. And here here when he he says he despised the shame of it and and he as he died there he, he said, forgive them. Forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they're doing. And they didn't know what they were doing. The Jew didn't know it. The Jews still don't know what they did. They still don't believe that he was the Messiah. And so here we see him, but he says also at the end of this race, at the end of this run that he had that was set before him, notice what happened. And he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So he is there this morning. He has he he run the race. He completed the race, and he did what he was supposed to do. And for you and me and our sins, they had he made an atonement for them, and we're saved because of Jesus Christ and for what he did on the cross of Calvary. And this morning he's sitting on the right hand of the Father in heaven making intercessions he's, he's making excuses if you would he's telling god that's mine i died for it and god has to forgive us when we ask forgiveness of our sins and jesus is there interceding for us and saying that's my child i died for that one i died for that one i died for that one and so this morning you have a father in heaven and you have a Savior, Jesus Christ, your brother in, in Christ. Listen, he is sitting there and he is making those excuses for your or, or, or those intercessions. He's covering for you, if you would. He's saying, I'll take that. I'll take that. I died for that. And you let that person be forgiven of that sin. And God says, I can't refuse my son, Jesus Christ. He can't refuse him. And so this morning... That's the enjoyment that you're having. And this morning, it ought to be that you could enjoy it more than what you do. Mm -hmm. But you don't realize, in the flesh, you can't realize what a great thing you've got. And all we can do is just say this, that you just keep on running the race. Listen, you're going to stumble, you're going to, you're going to stump your toe, and you're going to fall a lot. But listen... He's always there to pick you up. He's always there to dust you off. He's always there to, to help you on your way. And so don't don't give up. Don't give up on on, 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 on your life. Don't give up on anything that uh, that's interfering with you because listen, Jesus is there and the Holy Spirit is there and he speaks to your heart. And so here again, as we continue in verse three, he says, for consider him that endured such contradictions of sinners against himself. Consider it. Lest ye be weary and faint in your mind. And so this is the lesson here that we should encourage you to not forget who's sitting on the right hand of the Father. Who died for you on the cross and who made it possible for you to be with your heavenly father eternally. Listen, people, uh, it ought to encourage you to go out and to tell those that uh, don't know this. Hey, I know a way, I know a way that you can escape 
the end results of your race. Because the end results of so many people's race is that they're just going to run off into hell. Right. They're going to run off into hell. And so you need to, you need to uh, think about this because you have a great opportunity. And uh, as the days go by, if you're not careful, you'll let some of them slip. But that's, 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 what, that's what, the, what the Lord Jesus had in mind for us when he, when he, uh, when he went to the cross that we might uh, tell others about him. Now, he says here in verse 4, Ye have not yet resisted unto blood. And I believe he's talking about all of those back in the days, way back when, uh, in the Old Testament, when they were they were killed and 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 and, and beaten and all this and tucked before the kings and all this and and they were they were killed and there was a lot of them as we was we seen there of stone they were they were run through with swords uh, they were sawed in half these are the things that he says here ye have not resisted unto blood striving against sin ye have and ye have forgotten the exhortation or the teaching which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening or the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Now, again, uh, we could think of Job as he was rebuked or as he had to suffer all these things. But listen, we this morning as God's people are often chastised. Right. Uh, and I, I know it's it's a it's a it's a, a hard thing to to do. But listen, when you are when you are being chastised, remember this: the reason for the chastisement is first of all, and the main thing is that God loves you. Amen. God loves you, and that's the reason why that He wants to chasten you and to get you back in line because. Listen, a lot, a, lot, a lot of times, like when he's talking about running the race, so many times we find a wonderful, beautiful, shady, cool place to sit down, and we want to stay there. And we get to the place where that we just don't want to get up, and we don't want to move. And so sometimes that chasing has to be done. And so he loves you, and he don't want to see you sitting there because he's got other plans for you down the road. In the place. And so he has to lightly tap you, or he'll send the Holy Spirit and say, Hey, you know, Jesus died for you, and you need to get up and go about your way. And so here he says, My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, as I have already said, and scourgeth, or scourgeth every son whom he receives. If ye endure chastening, or chastising, God dealeth with you as with sons. And for what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? And so, <clears throat> if you're chastened, and you have been, I know you have, if you're a child of God, you've been chastened. Right. But listen, you look over the side of you, you see it no, the same way. Same way, it's all over the church. We've been chasing. And listen, he says, I believe, uh, uh, that here in verse 8, if you, if, you haven't cha if you haven't been chastened, you need to do some soul searching. Amen. Because what does it say here? But if, in verse 8, but if you be without chastisement, Whereof all are partakers, all are partakers that are children of God. And if you're not being chastised of things that you're doing and out of the will of God and sitting by the wayside and not trying to do anything, he says here that you're an illegitimate child. You're right. not of the Father. You're a bastard, he's called. Right. And so this morning, it's, it, it, it behooves every one of us to do soul searching. To do praying, to, to ask the Lord, hey, if, if what I need to do, let the Holy Spirit show me. Amen. Because I need, I myself, I need to be chastised. I need to. And I, I you know, I it's, it hurts, but the thing of it is, listen, it's necessary for me. 
Mm -hmm. It's necessary for me because I am a stubborn, hard-headed Christian. And sometimes I don't want to do what God wants me to do sometimes. And I have all kinds of excuses and I say, well, that may be of the devil. But no, listen, he comes right back to me and he chastens me. Mm -hmm. And I know, I know this this morning that if he does it to me, he does it to y'all. Mm -hmm. And we're, and, we're, and, and you, you say, thank the Lord, if you will. Mm -hmm. Because listen, there's no better evidence to fight the devil with that. Mm -hmm. Because the devil will come to you and he'll say, you thought you were saved, but look what you're doing. Look what you're thinking. The Lord Jesus Christ, uh, you, you don't want to serve him in God. And the Holy Spirit will come by and speak to your heart. And you're, you're chasing and that's evidence this morning Amen. that you are a child of God. And so here he says, But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then you are bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of, of spirits and will? And so you that have obeyed your parents and your your father and your mother, listen, it's a greater, it's a greater thing to respect and to obey the Holy Spirit and the Father. Amen. Because listen, they're the ones that he, he, he's the one that looks out after your soul. He's the one that he's the one that will protect you when all everybody else fails. Right. He's Amen. the one that'll be there with you. And so these are some of the things this morning in, in this, and you can read on, uh, and uh, there's a lot more that, that you can uh, get out of this thing, but uh, notice here, and I'll read this and I'll, and I'll close. For we had our fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them, and I've read this reverence, shall we not much more rather be subjecting to the su subject, <coughs> subjection to the Father and the Spirit live? For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Amen. Now he says, no chastening for the present time. Present seems to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness in him which are exercised thereby. And so Amen. it will it will yield. It will help you. Chastening is the best thing. It's better than fertilizer to a plant. Mm -hmm. It'll make you grow. It'll make you be more uh, pleasing in the sight of God and it'll be, make you more uh, uh, desire, have a greater desire to serve the Lord. So this morning, uh, Think upon these things, and uh, uh, you know you're you're in a race. Mm -hmm. You're in a race, and uh, and it's not like you're out there running in the shorts. But listen, as you walk through this life, you rub up an elbow to elbow with all kinds of people, and listen, be careful with it because a lot of it will rub off on you. And so, run the race with patience, and run the race that you might attain the finish line. Thank you all so much for listening to me.